tons of news this month. So let's go ahead and get croaking. I mean, cranking. <laughs> Already, right, Jay? Already, we're going to start with this. I know. Sorry. Okay, so let's start with some big business news by looking at some recent mergers and partnerships going on, starting with a first-of-a-kind agreement from NYIX, that's N-Y-I-I-X, Peering Exchange. They recently announced that a Japan-based cable TV operator, TCN, has joined the IX, adding a big connectivity, connectivity piece to their ecosystem. We talk a lot about ecosystems these days, don't we, Jay? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love uh, TCN. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Now it's time to fly from Tokyo to Texas. We are, or New York actually, right? Uh, to Texas mm -hmm. as Data Bank announces the acquisition of four data centers in Houston, previously owned by Cirrus One. Mm -hmm. The deal adds 42 and a half megawatts of power and over 300,000 square feet of capacity to Data Bank's already amazing portfolio. 300,000. 300,000. That's like what, you know, you know, my basic math skills. That's what three or four football fields long. Maybe a little bit. Bigger, yeah. I, I think back when I think <laughs> about 300,000, you know, square feet, I think about the 250 square foot apartment that I had in college and think that maybe these data centers are being a little greedy. Yeah. Yeah. But how many racks and cabinets did you have in there? Well, I actually, um, back then it would have been like a class five switch. So it would have been like a, a, a behemoth uh, piece of equipment there in my co or in my uh, my college uh, dorm. Uh, so <laughs> college kids, college kids would not understand what we were talking about right now. However, they probably do understand um, what it's like to eat ramen. I don't think that uh, that that really ever goes away. But speaking yeah. yeah. of uh, ramen and affordability, uh, broadband provider Vive, a, a company near and dear to my heart, has joined the FCC's affordable connectivity program. That's the FCC's ACP program. And that's aimed at providing low income households, uh, households across their footprint with high speed internet access. This is a pretty cool thing, Jay. It's basically, it's a, a government program that for qualified low income households, they essentially get like a $30 broadband credit that can be applied to uh, kind of basic broadband services, or they can actually apply that $30 to a much larger, more robust, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, broadband broadband package. So it's, it's pretty cool stuff. Oh, I love that. What a great cause, you know, access to everyone. We really need it. So important. Another big and important partnership announcement comes out of the Midwest this month. Uh, we're talking 1623 Farnham welcoming subspace into their ecosystem as a brand new pop uh, point of presence carrier option for their meet me room and internet exchange. And you know what? We should say that this news coincides with 1623 Farnham's recent digital transformation FOMO campaign, which they've been publicizing the benefits of Omaha as a connectivity hub. Uh, I was just checking out their infographic they put out this month and learned so much. It's really, you know, a great one to, okay, how are you doing, Dean? Are you, are you okay? How's your voice? <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is, uh, it's dry. Right now, it, it is dry, but I feel like it sounds sexy, so I think we should we'll, we'll, we'll keep moving on. I also do love the digital transformation, fear of missing out campaign. That's uh, that's pretty cool stuff by uh, 1623. So good work there, you guys. Uh, but anyway, onward and upward, Jamie. Over back to you. <laughs> it's the spirit, my friend. I'm so sorry <laughs> for torturing you like this. All right, okay. um, let's take a look now at some of the big construction news from this uh, last month. We can stay in the Midwest for some deployment news. Horizon announcing new fiber to the home expansions across Ohio. Hundreds of miles of fiber slated to go live later this year. Awesome. And another uh, another notable deployment announcement comes from 3Red8, who, and I, and I, pardon me if I'm not saying that right, 3Red8, all one word, 3Red and 8, um, who is set to build the first open access fiber optic network in more than 30 years. Open access fiber network in more than 30 years. You heard that right. Um, uh, do you want to take a guess at how many states this dark fiber will run across, Jamie? Any guesses? <laughs> Um, 18 states, Dean. I, I cheated because I read this article before. <laughs> yeah, I forgot this is our job. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, one of the few states that 3Red8 networks will not be touching is Massachusetts, where Lightpath has announced a major expansion of its Boston Metro network. The new route will be able to support more than 2,000 new organizations in the Beantown area, which got me thinking about Beantown. 
I always assumed it was because of Boston baked beans. Is that is that correct? Is Bean Town Boston Bean Town because of actual beans or for something else? Now, see, that's one I couldn't cheat on. I have no idea. <laughs> Sounds right. I don't know. Um, I have no idea, but we'll have to look that one up. Yeah, I went to college there. I should know this. But uh, anyway, let's move over to Vietnam. Hard transition, but let's go. <laughs> a little forced, um, but I liked it. <laughs> forced it. All right. Um, all the way over to Vietnam, where Redline Communications has announced they will deploy, this is so cool, virtual fiber solutions across nine remote oil and gas field locations. Mm. Just really crazy. Here's the kick right there. All located in the South China Sea. What a project. Get your scuba gear out, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, you know that's out of my depth. Oh, oh, yeah, very, very cheesy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, well, look, as, as my dad, as, as a dad, I am allowed, and my dad would do this too, I'm allowed to make <laughs> dad jokes as much as I want. Uh, but moving on to some facility expansion news, SVP has expanded its credit facility. The new construction comes on the tail of acquiring big financial backers like the Bank of Hope. Webster and City National Bank. So they are striking while the iron is hot over there at SVP. Yeah, yeah, you got that right. And Phoenix Nap apparently has the same idea, recently launching its bare metal cloud edge architecture in Austin, Texas. With this new deployment, they are aiming to provide access to their services for customers across the American Southwest. And Asia Pacific provider BDX knows all about new homes as they recently moved their global headquarters and leadership team to Singapore. We're mm -hmm. hearing a lot about uh, Asia and Singapore as well. Um, mm -hmm. They previously operated a data center in Singapore, but now plan to triple their investment in the region. So good stuff coming out of BDX with regard to eight Asia Pac. But speaking of moving, I moved recently, Jay, as you know, about six months ago, and I'm getting ready to take um, uh, a week vacation starting right after this recording, and I'm going to clean my garage. That's my vacation. I'm going to clean my garage. I'm going to put shelves in and organize the garage um, so that I can uh, kind of spruce up my headquarters, so to speak. Yeah, sort of a spring cleaning, sprucing up. I yeah, like it. Correct. New kick, you know, yeah. Okay, new vibes. I get you. I get you. Right. Sad vacation uh, agenda, but that's, you know, I, I'm hearing you. All right. <laughs> Um, and you know what? Talking about uh, new fresh, there are some new kids on the block that we need to mention. And um, we were not we're talk talking about the new kids on the um, block. No. Okay. No, well, now we are. Um, and there is <laughs> a brand new player in the American telecom construction scene, guys. Here we are, the debut of a new industry player, Lightspeed. Love them. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of the management team you, you already know, uh, but they are hitting the ground running as a new name to watch, currently hiring telecom construction and installation crews all across the country. We're seeing a lot of hiring too, which is uh, which is good news for, for our industry. Um, in our final piece of expansion and construction news, Data Bank announced an expansion of their Las Vegas data center facility. The addition will double the site's capacity to three megawatts of critical power and three 30,000 square foot um, right there beside the Las Vegas um, McCarran International Airport. So more expansion coming from, uh, from our folks there at Databank. And speaking Las Vegas, of course, we have to talk about channel partners coming up in Vegas, April 11th through the 14th. JSA will be there too. We're excited to see y'all. We'll be filming JSA TV interviews in that exhibit hall. So go ahead and shoot us an email at say hi at jsa.net to schedule an interview. Yeah, I love that email address. Uh, but Jamie, tell me, do you think many uh, JSAers will be gambling while they're in Vegas? Um, uh, well, I'm, you know, not me. I'm, I tend to be uh, drawn more to the shows, like give me Cirque du Soleil anytime over a poker table. But speaking of poker, uh, the singer of Poker Face is going to be in Vegas. And you you just told me that you were going to go see her, yeah? Yeah, Lady Gaga. Yeah, cool. I love her. I, I'm really excited. My husband surprised me with some tickets. Although I will say it's the first time doing some type of like in an audience environment post pandemic. Yeah. So I'm a little, uh, but you know, mask it. We're, we're triple vaccinated. So uh, it's time to get out there and see Gaga. You know, and it's Gaga. 
So. I love it. I love it. Well, when I'm in Vegas, I typically gravitate more towards the endless buffets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've never been much at gambling. So, uh, you know, crab legs and steak for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for me. Um, so I made <laughs> so I made that at the blackjack table, but I'm always a winner at the buffet table. Uh-huh. And as long as I'm not sitting next to you on the plane ride home. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, speaking of winners, let's move on to the awards headlines for this yeah. month. Go ahead, Buffet Boy. <laughs> okay. Let's start with the prestigious CRN Data Center 50 list, where two friends of JSA were just recently honored. You know, you're right. Major congratulations to both T5 Data Centers and Server Farm. What a great accomplishment. So well deserved. T5 um, also recently achieved a top certification for information security this month, we should mention. So it's been a big month of accolades for them. They're really uh, rounding it up. They now have their ISO IEC 27001 certification, which is really a very rigorous international standard. So props to them. Jamie, I'm so glad I didn't have to read that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But speaking with awards, there's also the Data Cloud Global Awards, which will be given out later this month in Monaco. Our friends Zenlayer um, have been shortlisted, shortlisted for two awards there, the Data Cloud Edge Enablement Award and the Connectivity Innovator of the Year Award. So big shout out to our friends at Zenlayer. Oh, yes. And let's hope nobody gets slapped at that awards ceremony. <laughs> We couldn't, we couldn't not do this and get that in, could we? Sorry. Sorry. Anyway, Jamie. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, moving on. Oh, yeah, that's all me. We're in our home stretch now, so let's, let's stay focused. What other industry announcements deserve our coverage this month, Jay? All right, yes, I'm composing myself. Um, Cummins. Cummins has announced a virtual roundtable event called Data Center Decarbonization Through Sustainable Power, mm -hmm. taking place April 14th. It sounds like a great event, uh, and you can win a portable generator just by registering, which is very neat. Very cool. I would love one of those to put in my garage, as a matter of fact. Um, the NIX, we spoke about them early, NYIIX, Internet Exchange recently celebrated their 25th anniversary. They posted a great retrospective on the Telecom News Now blog page. That's a JSA TNN blog page, so check that out, about all the changes that they've seen in the industry over the last decade and a half. So uh, pop some champagne. It's uh, 25. It's a, it's a big one for the... Uh, the New York Internet Exchange, N-Y-I-I-X. Oh, my gosh. Celebrating 25 years. Yeah. Ah, gosh. Um, all right. And Volta did some celebrating in a different way, actually, uh, commemorating International Data Center Day, which we're all celebrating, uh, by partnering with Girls, Inc., a nonprofit organization that empowers young girls for the future. There's a great article, again, on TNN, uh, which is jsa.net slash blog, um, which I really love this article. What a great cause and what a great way to celebrate International Data Center Day. Yeah, outstanding. Our last headline is also uh, near and dear to your heart, Jamie. Most uh, dear to your heart and my heart, all of Collective JSA's heart. Um, Edge Connects executive Philip Marangella doesn't seem like uh, he goes a week without uh, getting himself uh, right smack dab in the middle of the news. Um, he had a recent appearance on JSA's very own Dave, Data Movers podcast. Why don't you tell us how that went? Yeah, it was it was awesome. He's he's uh, of course a phenomenal speaker, uh, but it was just a really great organic chat. I definitely encourage everyone to check it out. The interview is part of our Greener Data series, where we've been interviewing others, uh, the authors of this multi-author uh, book coming up um, on Earth Day. Actually, we are releasing this book on Amazon April twenty second, and uh, Philip shares a little bit of a preview of his chapter in the book. And uh, so I really uh, suggest you check that out. You can also hear from Philip and a few other um, key uh, chapter contributors um, at our Greener Data Virtual Roundtable coming up April 7th, so next Thursday. Um, and go ahead and check out hashtag Greener Data to learn more. This is our month. We are launching this book. We are talking, uh, getting our, our industry sustainable. And we have to do it now, guys. I'm so excited to, to be part of these chats and, uh, and hearing these great innovations and hopefully sharing them with our industry and beyond. 
Yeah, Jamie, I'm 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 really really stoked about this. One of the you know one of the luxuries I guess we have as the account team is we get to kind of read some of the forwards uh, yeah. initial drafts of this. And and the thing that struck me most was that um, there is there is something well beyond kind of a, a lip service now. It's something that's real. Uh, um, and, and it's happening. And I love, I love that we have this like human side and business side and, and environmental side of what's kind of happening in our industry in this, in this book. It, it really feels like the, the beginning of more books, frankly, to me. Yeah, uh, 24 thought leaders contributed chapters in, uh, for Greener Data. And I'm telling you, they're real world right now case studies, examples of how folks are working on getting their networks, their facilities, um, their, uh, their businesses uh, more green, more sustainable, uh, reducing those carbon emissions, uh, considering biodiversity within their sites, really phenomenal tips how to engage and empower people, resource management, uh, really uh, using hardware and software to work together uh, to really tackle this cause, which we all need to be tackling from every corner of the earth together simultaneously. So these are like, don't even think of it as a book, think of it as a movement, think of it as um, many, many blueprints lined up together for you to take influence from and, 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 and really uh, uh, join us in this movement and enact these, uh, these ideas in your own facilities, in your own companies. Um, and, and let's move forward together and save the planet. I love it, Jay. I love it. And uh, so much exciting news uh, going on. Jamie, we're really almost about done. I managed to get through without a single croak. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> it's, always, it's always great to do this, and it's always great to, to, to hang out with you, Captain. So thanks for, um, for, uh, for having me again. Well done, Dino. And uh, your garage awaits you, my friend. Yeah. Uh, so let's call this a wrap. There has uh, This is another edition of our JSA Fast Forward, our monthly breakdown of news and notes from the telecom and data center industry. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, our, our little chit chat, a little coffee time. See you next time, guys. See you soon. And as always, happy networking.